My name is Tom Ryan. I'm the 18-year-old founder and CEO of Tom Zero Vehicles Incorporated and Bean Audio. I started my journey building things and building consumer electronics since a very young age. At age eight, I built my first light bulb out of materials I found around the house, pencil lead, you know, popsicle sticks, glue sticks, and just a bunch of random things. It lit up, but frankly, it blew up, and I had to iterate upon my design to make my light bulbs better. I then used cardboard and tape to build things like speakers, popsicle sticks to build things like drones, and I experimented a lot with you know, materials you would find around the house. And there was a lot of fire and there was a lot of explosions, uh, but eventually that led me to starting my first company at age 13, Bean Audio. Bean Audio uses new manufacturing methods like additive manufacturing to create products that are cheaper but better than the competition. I was able to sell these speakers, uh, and these were speakers that I produced, to corporate clients in batches of 75 units. And the first year I was able to reach six figures in revenue, and the following year I got two patents for my designs. I then reinvested these profits that I made with Bean Audio back into my drone business uh, that I started, Tom Zero Vehicles Incorporated. This drone business aims to make the road safer by creating drones, like police drones, public safety drones, and drones to respond to things like fires. This is my first drone, this is Tav1. I built this drone with off-the-shelf parts. You know, it led me to building more drones in the future, but this was my first drone. Um, this was Tav3, so this was two iterations later. This was my first really custom-made drone where I built basically everything in this drone myself. This was first, the first drone was built from off-the-shelf parts, and this is when I stepped it up and built Tav3. So this drone can go 135 kilometers an hour and has a service ceiling of 23,000 feet. So I even got my name on it, and uh, it's this whole thing is 3D printed. So you see, this is my second one. It has uh, some wiring, which I got rid on the third one. It's not good to have wires, but you know, learning process, right? So I then started building my latest drone, Tab 5. First, I used 3D printing to create this mock-up of the drone, as you can see, and then I utilized. CNC and real manufacturing methods to create the final drone. So this is the newest drone, Tab 5. This drone is significantly more capable than my old ones because you can attach different payloads. So the payloads are flexible, you can attach different types of cameras, um, and you can attach different landing gear and power sources. So speaking of power sources, I actually built this engine. This is one of the options you can attach onto the drone. So while traditional electric uh, batteries can fly for you know 30 minutes to 50 minutes an engine will allow the drone to fly for significantly longer So this is an option that users can take So your first and your second companies are clearly in different fields What made you decided to pivot into the drone industry? So here's the thing with drones whoever controls the drones frankly controls the world right drones are very complicated things and they're very hard to build but once you build them, you have huge dominance uh, over an entire industry. So look at DJI, right? They've been able to have essentially an 80% market share that's been undisputed for years. When you look at the American market, for example, you have other players like Skydio, uh, which has a 5% dominance, and they've been dominating for a very long time. So while speakers are really good for small money, frankly, and being able to practice my entrepreneurial skills at producing things and getting them shipped, because the logistical you know, challenges of actually producing products and customer support is not easy. So if you ship a speaker out and it breaks, how do you deal with it, right? What if a customer is upset with their speaker? What if the speakers have quality issues? How do you deal with 10 plus factories on a daily basis? And I was also able to get two pants for my drones. Um, and this was something that I learned from my speakers. But with the drones, uh, with the speakers, I was able to practice these skills. And I hope that with the drones, I can expand upon my business. I can expand upon what I do. So I reach a larger market and hopefully dominate an industry. I also do believe it's very profitable, frankly, because drones can, are really hard to make. And once you make them, it's a moat, right? It's a moat around your business that is very hard for other businesses to penetrate. It's not like an AI product or a software product where if you build it, uh, two weeks later, someone else can put you into obsolescence, right? Drones, you build it, it stays. Um, so that's why I wanted to, you know, pivot into drones. But I think that, you know, with my speakers, I was more looking to create something to learn how to do the logistical, you know, aspect of starting a business. What does the China supply chain mean for your companies? So this is the thing about China's supply chain. A part that costs $600 to produce in America costs $40 to produce in China. That's a huge difference, right? That's 15 times more to produce in America. 
Now, the thing with China's supply chain is it's not just cheap, it's also very fast and very precise. With my speakers, I was able to get thousands of units shipped to my doorstep within four days of sending that design to the factory. Now, this was not a design that the factory had produced before. This was a design that I just had created and wanted to ship for my initial batch of speakers. And the factory was like, yeah, we'll do it in four days. And this is something that, you know, is very unique to China's supply chain and really cements that it has the best supply chain. Um, because it's allowed me to do a lot of things with my speaker business, like prototyping cheaply, going quick to market, things that just frankly wouldn't have been possible in other countries. Now, additionally, you know, who wants to speak to a 13 year old starting a business, right? When you start, when you have a factory, you probably don't want to speak to a 13 year old who approaches you with vague ideas of producing something. But China's supply chain, many of the factories were like, okay, we'll produce, right? We'll produce a few units for you to test. We'll give you samples and then we'll produce more, but we'll give you those samples first. And that was very important because you know, when I started being audio, I had $300 in the bank. I didn't have, you know, venture capital backing. I didn't have angel investors. I had $300 from allowance that I had saved up. With this, I was able to really turn that into something much more because of the low barriers to entry that the Chinese supply chain poses. Now, this has allowed me to reinvest more profits back into my drone company, but the same thing applies with my drone company. I'm able to produce low quantities or high quantities if I want, uh, relatively quickly and at pretty low prices, which has allowed me to prototype fast and has been very influential for my businesses. When your drone company operates in the US, how do you plan to manage or balance the supply chains between China and the US? So I think uh, when I start my, or expand my drone operations into the United States, it's a very um, difficult balancing act of politics, frankly, and being able to get things in the right place. So in China, uh, with my speaker company, I've, I've mainly produced in China. Uh, but, you know, with my drones, I'm looking for a China Plus supply chain. Now, China has a great supply chain. Let's get that right. But I want to have a China Plus supply chain so I can have multiple supply chains that are more redundant uh, and be able to produce products faster. But I am looking at producing my speakers in China still, and I am still looking at producing my drones here. What do you think is the next China-related startup opportunity for the young people in the West? So, uh, the next China-related startup uh, opportunity for people in the West um, it's probably something to do with AI. Now, here's the thing with my drone business and how AI has played a role with my drone business. All right, something that I thought would have costed $10 million and a whole team of engineers, AI coded in two hours. Actually, I wanted AI to code a vision recognition system for my drone, something that the world is very crazy about with drones lately. And I was able to ask ChatGPT, can you code this for me? And it coded it in less than two hours with a little bit of prompts and a little bit of uh, you know checking after the code but it was not very difficult to code with AI and frankly I think that that has lowered the barrier to entry for young entrepreneurs who want to build cool things that people want so they can code things with AI um, and frankly there's also a huge growing market for AI products in and of itself uh, so my friend actually raised five million dollars building an AI product using basically an AI wrapper. So this is something that I think people should be looking at, especially younger kids, is how can I use AI to incorporate you know, that into my products? How can I speed up my development with AI? But also, how can I potentially build something that involves AI? So as for my drones, it's you know, AI recognition, AI traffic management, um, something that AI will be, play a role in on the drones, but actually coding the drones as well is AI. So I think that's something that uh, people can really look at when they think about startups. As you mentioned, drones have the potential to change the world. We've already seen how they've played a dominant role in the war in Ukraine. But how do you envision your drones contributing to global peace and goodwill? Well, I think, uh, I mean, anything has the potential for misuse, right? I mean, you can misuse a car, you can misuse anything, frankly. Um, while my drones are not intended for war, of course, there's certain potentials for them to be used in war. Of course, my drones are intended for peaceful operations like surveilling a street, keeping people safe by responding to fires, finding lost people in the woods. But of course, uh, that can be misused. Now, I don't want to get into specifics about you know, certain countries fighting each other because I don't think I'm in a very good position to talk about that. Um, but I think that drones can be used for peace, and it has been, right? 
there are a lot of drones, I mean, you look at DJI drones, you look at Skydio drones, a lot of them are used to make streets safer. And that's my goal with this. It's not necessarily to, you know, do something that looks like a war drone. It's not like something that, you know, is used in war. It's just to try to keep the peace on the streets. What's your most crazy plan for your future products? Well, I think the, the most crazy plans uh, for my future on the civilian side would probably be trying to do flying cars. I think that drones and flying cars have a lot of similarities, right? You have motors, same thing. You have flight control systems, which a lot of it is being coded by AI now. Um, but that's something that is instrumental to flying cars. And by creating drone technology and refining my drone technology, I hope that I'll be able to potentially bring that to flying cars in the future and commercialize those.